Hi, I'm Mary Morris, the author of two best-selling books and founder of Life Mastery Institute. We're celebrating July 4th here in the United States. We celebrate July 4th as our Independence Day. Now, if you're here in the United States, you know that there are big celebrations happening all over this country as we remember that on the same day in, 19, in 1776, the founders of our nation declared our country's freedom from Great Britain. Now, two of the authors of the Declaration of Independence, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, they both went on to become President of the United States. And yes, they helped us declare freedom and declare independence from Britain's rule. Uh, they found another kind of independence later in their life that is really the topic of today's conversation. Tom Jefferson was known as the pen of the Declaration, John Adams as the voice of the Declaration. And these words were written and spoken in a way that emboldened people all over the United States and, frankly, in other countries, that there's something powerful inside every single one of us, something that's, that really longs for freedom, deserves freedom, and has a right for freedom. And these were the words that were written. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that everyone is created equal. All men and women are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, things that can never be taken from you. And among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. That's in our nature to want and have these things. Now, the United States did go through a war. There were many different things that occurred. And then we gained our right to have that freedom and learn to live into it. The great things that we wrote in that declaration, we're still, as a country, learning to live into it. And wherever you are in the world today, know that. There is this inalienable right in each one of us for life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. These men, though, learned another kind of independence over their life. It didn't come easily to them, and often spiritual independence doesn't come easily either. There's through the lessons of life. But I know there's a great deal for us to be gained by looking into their lives and what they learned. John Adams became the second president. He wanted very much to have a two-term presidency. At the end of his first term, and as he was running for his second term, Tom Jefferson and his tribe came in and they won, and John Adams lost his second term as president. John Adams became very bitter about that. He thought that Jefferson had done some un untruthful things. He'd been wily in his tactics, and he didn't like it that Tom Jefferson became third president uh, and stripping him of his right to have a two-term presidency. And he went off with Abigail, and they went off to the places that they lived, and he would not speak to Jefferson for decades, during which time Jefferson made many attempts to contact John Adams, and he refused to talk to Jefferson. And then over time, uh, the men aged. And then when Abigail, uh, John Adams' wife, died, Jefferson made one more attempt. This time, after a few months after the letter came, Adams wrote back to Jefferson. And these two men began a letter exchange and a way when they would, they would travel and meet each other and have conversations about the deeper truths, about the, the, the things that they had learned by living out the truths they had written and the things they had written in the Declaration. And John Adams learned something about forgiveness. Jefferson learned about confession. and <laughs> They learned about telling of their, their youthful thinking, their, their, their thrive for power, their wanting to make such a difference. Both of those men really cared about this new country, really wanted to bring a difference, had different ways of getting there. And over time, they not only forgave each other, but they became dear, dear friends, and they began to share the spiritual truths that they were learning and the lessons that would go back and forth. And then, towards the end of their lives, Tom Jefferson had heard that Adams was failing in his health. Jefferson writes him a letter, you know, just, how are you doing? How are you really doing? And the last letter that John Adams writes to Tom Jefferson, he says, you ask me how John Adams is, I will tell you. Now, this is, this is, this is what I'm about to share with you. This is evidence of the spiritual independence that he had grown to. I'll tell you. He said, the house in which John Adams lives is crumbling. The, the foundation is crumbling. The door is falling off its hinges. The roof is cracking uh, and leaking. And yes, soon John Adams will need to move out of this house. But John Adams, John Adams himself, is quite well, quite well indeed. Thanks for asking. Now, what is he speaking about? He's speaking about a recognition that he's discovered that he's more than his body that the body in which he's living 
he's crumbling. It's falling apart. There's some difficult things that are going on in this body. And yes, spirit at some point here soon will have to move out of this body. But he also identified that there's a part of him that's independent of that body. There's a part of him that's more than his circumstances. And that's a spiritual independence that every single one of us can find. One more story about John Adams and Tom Jefferson. Their letters are well documented. You can read all the letters if you choose. But an interesting fact, those two men, who one who was the pen of the Declaration and one who was the voice of the Declaration, who in later life became dear, dear friends and spiritual friends, those two men died within hours of each other on the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And their independence into the next stage of life was granted on that day, the same day. Those two men helped bring that independence to our world. Now, whatever country you're in, whatever way you celebrate independence, we're all in dependence of the very spirit that gives us life. We're in dependence of that power breathing us, that power beating our heart. And when we learn to be independent of other people's opinions, independent of circumstances, independent of our history, independent of, of looking to see into other people's eyes for opinion and approval, and become really dependent on that power breathing us, look to it, and simply ask this question, what would love do here? When we ask that question, the highest truth will always be answered to us. What will love do here in this relationship? What would love do here as I take a step into my business? What would love do here as I choose how to nourish and take care of my body? What would love do here? That power is available to every single one of us, no matter what country or political system we're in. You have the power today for spiritual independence. Take that power and live it today. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll go ahead and share it with others. If you haven't signed up for the YouTube channel here, I encourage you to do that. I hope you will. More than that, what's something that matters to you about being independent in spirit, independent of conditions, independent of something that's been going on in your life? What kind of independence would you love? Go ahead and put it there in the comment section below. I love hearing from you. I hope to see you real soon. Bye for now.